Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. When a boat is on fire, specialized watercraft equipped with firefighting hoses and nozzles are launched to help. Fireboats can spray thousands of gallons of water a minute, five to 10 times that of a fire truck. On land, fire trucks must hook up to a fire hydrant for its water supply, whereas fireboats have the advantage of repurposing the water they're floating on. Powerful pumps on board transfer the water to the boat's hoses and nozzles, which shoot it hundreds of feet in the air, allowing fireboats to quickly extinguish flames on other vessels and saving lives. It requires a lot of force for the fireboat's pumps to take up water and create the pressure to spray it out of the nozzles on deck. In the 1800s, when the first fireboats were launched, their pumps were powered by steam energy. Today, gigantic generators create the electricity needed to power all the equipment on board. Fireboats also come with much of the firefighting apparatus you'd find on a fire truck. Hand tools, axes, shovels, and pike poles are readily available. Crew members also have access to masks and oxygen tanks to protect them when they get up close to the flames. Though these fireboats are usually seen in non-emergency situations, sometimes throwing up large arcs of water to honor a military fleet or welcome a historical ship, they serve a critical purpose when ships are in distress. One of the most expensive fireboats ever built is called the Protector and is presently docked in the port of Long Beach, California. Estimated to cost $27 million, the Protector is an impressive multi-mission vessel. It is equipped with a command center and an onboard crane. The Protector features 10 firefighting nozzles, which shoot over 50,000 gallons per minute, reaching up to two football fields in length. If a person is in need of medical assistance, the Protector even has a makeshift hospital on board. Automation allows the Protector to be operated by a tiny four-man team. This is because it features a dual propulsion system, allowing it to move fluidly in two axes, forwards, backwards, and side to side. Search and rescue boats, on the other hand, are smaller and more agile than fireboats. They serve a critical purpose in a man overboard situation. Easy to launch and fast on the water, search and rescue boats save time to save lives. The crew aboard a search and rescue boat uses many tools to scour large bodies of water to find a missing person. In freezing temperatures, a person wearing a life vest will lose consciousness in just 15 minutes and won't survive past 45 minutes. Therefore, every second counts in a search and rescue mission. To expedite their search, emergency responders use specialized equipment. Wave prediction technology analyzes the condition of the water around the vessel, and radar senses the heat and space between waves, allowing emergency responders to determine if it's safe to launch smaller boats to expand the search at sea level. Drones are another essential tool in a search and rescue mission. Launched from the ship's deck, 
Large drones can survey an area quickly. Sensors on the aircraft send location data back to crews on the ship in real time. Most search and rescue drones are equipped with a thermal camera, which has a sensor able to determine the temperature of an object below. This is critical to locate a person whose body would be warmer than the water surrounding them. If a ship is partially underwater or has sunk, robots are brought in to handle this more challenging type of search. Like drones, underwater robots are remote controlled and equipped with sensors. They can map the seafloor and provide rescuers with a clearer picture of what's happening under the waves. Helicopters are another essential tool in emergencies, including search and rescue missions. When a call for help comes in, members of the Coast Guard can take off and quickly fly to the exact location of the accident. Unlike fixed-wing aircraft, helicopters can hover in place and descend vertically in the span of a few seconds to get close enough for an emergency responder to lower himself by harness to the victim below. Once the patient is stabilized, they are lifted by harness back to the helicopter. A crew member waiting aboard helps secure the patient in the aircraft before flying at high speeds, called a dash, to the hospital. The largest medical helicopters may travel over 500 miles to the site of an emergency, stay for nearly an hour, and travel back to their point of origin with enough fuel reserve. Whether it's a multi-million dollar fireboat, a technologically advanced search and rescue vessel, or a helicopter built to travel great distance to locate an injured person, the vehicles used to respond to emergencies are truly expensive. A reasonable price to pay, however, for the lives they're built to save. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.